Okay, awesome. Welcome everybody to our April 2021 sales meeting. What an awesome sales meeting. Very different than what we were doing this time one year ago. Can't believe that a whole year has passed since um, last year at this time, we were basically in quarantine. So exciting that uh, life is back to some amount of normalcy. So welcome. My quote, once again, I like to start every meeting just talking about knowledge is not power, uh, execution is power. So it's we appreciate that you came on today's program, finding the time to, uh, to participate in all of the great resources that we have at LAIR, but it's only as good as what you execute on. So I want to encourage you to make sure you have a pen and paper so that you can take some notes throughout the program. If you can write down one or two things that you're gonna take into your business. Uh, I always talk about at our boot camp, a business model, a Japanese business model called Kaizen. And what Kaizen is, is that if you just do little teeny changes to your business every single day, like little teeny tweaks, because sometimes we look at the big picture and say, I have so far to go that, we get frozen. We don't end up moving because there's so much work to be done. But if you can just focus on doing a couple, one little tweak to your business every single day, at the end of a year, you've made a massive amount of progress. Statistically, you've made more progress than the people that make those huge leaps in one single bound. So Knowledge is not power. Execution is power. So make sure you take some notes and decide that you're going to take one thing that you learned today and move it into your business. First, we want to uh, welcome all of the agents who have joined us since last meeting. So we are still rapidly growing, even though the market is very busy. We have lots of agents that continue to grow our team. So we want to uh, welcome all these awesome agents. I see some of you guys are on today's program. So kudos to you guys for already digging in and participating in the tools and resources we have at LAIR. Um, by the way, I also see that we have some agents that are not currently at LAIR, which is totally fine. We invite agents from all different brokerages to participate in our programs because these are meant to help make agents better. Whether you're at our company or another company, we are committed to helping you live the best life possible. And you're going to be able to take tons of resources from today's program into your business, even if you're not uh, part of the lion's den. All right. Every month, we like to do a little section to give kudos to the agents who are really standing out within the company. So in order to get kudos, we just like to recognize some people that just go above and beyond. Uh, our team will send you a little layer box uh, so that you can go buy some layer um, gifts at Squad Locker. So if you're recognized today, you'll receive from our happy agent team your coupons to uh, redeem at Squad Locker for some cool gear. First, we want to give kudos to Jessica Preventure. Uh, it is our dot loop team who asked us to pay kudos today to Jessica because they said her loops are perfect. Every time she submits a transaction, the forms are all there. The forms are signed when they're supposed to be signed. There's Every I is dotted and T is crossed, and that makes life easier for our entire team. So bravo to Jessica on doing a great job on her loops. I also want to give kudos to Robin Magenheim. Uh, Robin is out of our North Reading office, and she's been so awesome, like going above and beyond. In our Andover office, uh, she even went above and beyond and got some landscaping quotes so that Many of you know we've been beautifying our many of our offices, including Andover. Uh, we recently had a brand new awning put on our Andover location. We did a full rehab of the first floor. And Robin said, you know what? Some new landscaping might make the place look even prettier. So she was awesome at helping us get some quotes for that. I also want to personally give some kudos to Barb Dwyer of our Westford office um, about two weeks ago, we had a huge shipment of 
supplies to the Chelmsford office. And I happened to be driving by the Chelmsford office and they were all outside in big boxes. So I said, oh, I got to stop in and carry all the supplies in. Barb happened to be in the office as well. And she helped me drag in boxes for a half an hour. So huge kudos to Barb Dwyer for helping out with that. Uh, and then I also want to give kudos to Kevin Durkin and John Crandall. Uh, Kevin and John built us a pretty neat backyard patio in the Chelmsford office. Uh, many of you participated in the St. Patrick's Day festivities and in Chelmsford they were extra special because they were out back in the little patio area they built. They even went so far as um, building a fire pit, uh, bringing in a, a, a grill. It's like a cool little hangout area out back. So kudos to Kevin Durkin and John Crandall for doing something cool for the entire team in Chumpsford. Okay, we wanna quickly go over our closings for the month of March. So March, we did $89 million in business. We did 230 closings last month. Uh, we wanna recognize our top five large teams by volume. So congratulations to Dennis Page and Associates, Dan O'Connell and Associates, uh, the Fulford Group out of Salem, the Results Realty Group, Tuxbury, and Button and & Co. in Burlington. Whoops, I went backwards. Next, small teams by volume. We have Rogers Mellow Team, Chumpsford, the Doug & Steve Team, West Roxbury, Cook & Co., Bill Ricca, J. McHugh Real Estate Team, Chumpsford, and the Courtney Group in Westford. Whoops, top five individuals by volume. We have Janet Cram Pepperell, Julie Cronin Melrose, Louisa Sistari Wellesley, John Crandall Chelmsford, and Saboric Pond in Lowell. Then we also do top five by transaction count. So top five large teams by transaction count. We have Dan O'Connell and Associate Strakett, the Results Group, Tuxbury, the Fulford Group, Salem, New Hampshire, Vision Realty Group out of Reading, and Dennis Page and Associates in Tingsboro. Then our small teams, we have Rogers Mellow Team, Chumsford, uh, Matt Kelly Team, Franklin, Jay McHugh Real Estate Team, Chumsford, the Stephen Doug Team, West Roxbury, Cook and Company out of Bill Ricca. And then last but not least, we have top five individuals by transaction count, Janet Cram Pepperell, Abigail Rose, a new agent. So kudos to Abby Rose for killing it, brand new in the business. Uh, in, in Fairhaven, Debbie Malone, Chelmsford, Jim Calwait, Sandwich, and Saboric Pond out of Lowell. So congratulations to everybody on an awesome March. I also wanted to uh, let everybody know that the Real Trends 500 and the Riz Media Power Broker reports came out for uh, last year's numbers. And we once again made the list. All this means, and by the way, our marketing team is updating the flyers on, uh, on tool, not toolkit, uh, Cloud CMA so that you can access cool flyers to include in your listing presentations. But what this means is that we are a top 500 real estate brokerage in the country based on the number of transactions we close, which is still awesome because we are independent and we are pretty small at just over say 500 to 550 agents. Uh, we're also a top 100 independent brokerage in the United States. So this is the kind of stuff you can be bragging about at listing and buyer presentations. Want to make sure everybody is paying attention to our lairrealty.com backslash training our event calendar. So every month, we have literally 20 to 30 training programs happening each month. If you go to lairrealty.com backslash training, you could see every event that's happening within Lair each month. 
I want to remind you that if you scroll to the bottom of the page, when you're on LairRealty.com backslash training, if you scroll underneath the calendar, you can sync our training calendar with your Apple calendar or your Google calendar. The cool thing about syncing is that you won't miss a training class that you really want to take. The cool thing too, at Lair, we record everything. So if you do miss a class, you can always go to lairuniversity.com and watch the recorded version. But I think it's a really good idea to sync your calendar. That way each day as you're booking your appointments, you can make sure that there's uh, not a class that you really want to see. One of the pieces that we've added to our calendar is that with the aid of our Lair Leadership Council, uh, we have been really working to revamp our uh, onboarding systems. And one of the things that many of the agents have said as we've been onboarding so many new agents at our company is that rather than have like individual meetings four or five individual meetings with agents that are joining, why not just offer tools training five days a week? So beginning in April, we started a program that literally every day of the week, we're training on tools. So if you go to Lair Realty backslash training, you can see the upcoming tools training. So like if you need help with the career den, you can log in and watch the training. If you need help with Dot Loop, Cloud CMA, Isaac, Lair Marketing, how to get paid, agent marketing bundles, you name it, we're doing tools training every single day. The other piece of that training is that the last 20 minutes of each of those programs is for Q&A. So you can, let's just say you want some help with dot loop. You can log in, watch the dot loop class, and then you can do the Q&A at the end if you have questions. Now, let's say that you really want one-on-one -on -one support then always feel free to email our team at happyagent at lairrealty.com. Let them know what you need some one-on-one -on -one support with. And we'll have our happy agent team reach out and schedule a one-to-one -one Zoom meeting with you to show you uh, any of the tools that you need help with. As a reminder, we have Ariana Cardillo every Monday. Start your Mondays. 7.30 a.m. She does an awesome resist training workout. What better way to start your week off perfect? So we have Ariana do this on Monday mornings because Monday is the most crazy day in real estate because you usually have tons of offers from properties on Sunday uh, or you're negotiating offers. Everybody waits till Monday. Like they got issues that come up Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They call you on Monday. So why not like be ready and rejuvenated? Take a 30 minute workout so that you are prepared to conquer the world each Monday. So you can find the information for attending that program at lairrealty.com backslash training. Um, we also wanted to make sure you guys were aware that we have some more AdWorks training coming up. Uh, we're going to do a little AdWorks demo for you today because we have a cool way that you can really utilize this program to find inventory for your clients. So we'll do that in a few minutes. But I wanted to let you know we're doing a, another agent training Wednesday, April 28th at 12 p.m. You could find that on the Lair training calendar. As well, if you have not watched the two one-hour AdWorks training classes we have done, please go to LairUniversity.com, go to the AdWorks section, and you'll see two one-hour programs that really shows you how to harness AdWorks to build your brand and build your business. Celebration. So slowly but surely, we have been opening up the offices safely, of course, um, and doing some small events. Uh, our uh, our St. Patrick's Day parties were a massive success. And so we decided we wanted to celebrate once again with Cinco de Mayo. Now, we don't have enough agents yet that wanna go out and celebrate to offer offer. Uh, events at every single office. So we've broken the offices down by regions so that um, 
there's always going to be an event somewhere in your region. And we encourage you to participate, even if it's not your office, get out to your regional event. But we're doing a Cinco de Mayo. And here's the link for that. We're going to send out an email as well. So you don't have to copy this down right this second. Uh, maybe we can have Sergio just share it inside the chat box. If you know that you're gonna attend, you can click there. But we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven offices. So uh, we'd love to see you at Cinco de Mayo for our next little, these are just little get together so that we can chat, share what's happening in the market, meet each other. Um, it's not a formal training program. Um, also make sure that you check out the most recent boot camp. On the first Friday of every month, we do a live agent boot camp. If you missed our most recent one and you're newer to the company or you want to dig in and really learn the tools a little bit more, you can go to lairuniversity.com, click on boot camp, and you'll see uh, all of our previous boot camps. But that class is essential because it's a deep dive into all of the awesome tools you have at your disposal at Lair. Also, as a reminder, make sure you download the Lair Program and Services Guide. This is your one-stop shopping for every tool that you have at your disposal at Lair. This is a 30-ish page guide. Um, when you open the Program and Services Guide, each page is dedicated to a particular tool at Lair. Each tool is created or offered so that you can build a better business. Anywhere where you see something underlined within that guide, that is just a small five to 10 minute training program on how best to utilize that tool. So little training classes on how to use that tool. All right, next I'm gonna have Sergio talk for a couple of minutes because um, based on a conversation we had last month at our Lair Leadership Council, we've made some changes to the Lair Marketing Bundle. This was the, the conversation that was started at Lair Leadership Council. Some of the agents were saying uh, that it takes too long to get our bundles, the marketing bundles, because we were running at about a 48-hour turnaround time. In other words, you put a listing on the market, within 48 hours, you would have your complete marketing bundle. An agent said 48 hours is too long. We can't wait 48 hours. The house is gone within 48 hours. That was part one. And then part two is we don't even want the brochure in most instances because we're not even using it. The house sells so quickly, we're not even using it. And then we said, what happens if somebody does want the brochure? So with that, I will let uh, Sergio chat for a few minutes about our Lair uh, marketing bundles and some of the other cool stuff that the marketing team is doing on behalf of our agents. Sure. Uh, real quick. Um, yeah. So now when we send out these bundles, you will receive uh, both an email and a text message to your cell phone. Uh, we are only doing the social media posts that, and we're this this helps us get them out much faster so we're we're aiming for a 24 hour turnaround so this is from the time it your home reaches the mls um we will get that these bundles out um if you can go to the next slide and to get them out even faster um we do have um a request form where you can order uh, your brochure since we're not sending it out if you do need the brochure you can go to this link here uh, and this link is also on the career then um, but you can also pre-order your bundle so if you know that your home is going to be listing soon you can give us all the information we need to get your bundle ready for for um, your your open house um, and so we can go to the next slide the next thing I wanted to go over were the market research. Um, I did a little video on how to post these market research things. So let's see if it plays. If not, I can play it on my end. Go to the next page. Yeah, that should be the video. You can easily post your market snapshots on your phone by going to your Jostle app, tap menu, tap library, tap market research, 
we're going to tap on Massachusetts. The first folder has detailed market report PDFs for each county as well as statewide. You can share these reports straight from your phone. Tap on the report and let it download. Tap on the export button on the top right. You can share it as I think we lose. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. One second. You can easily post your mark. Oh, one second. And let's go back to the second folder. This folder contains market snapshots ready to post on social media. To post these, just tap on one of the reports. Tap the download button on the top right. Tap the export button on the top right. You can share it directly via text or any app that supports it, or you can save the image to your phone. I'm going to post this on our Instagram stories. In our Instagram stories, tap the bottom left to bring up your camera roll. Tap the image you want to post. It fits perfectly in a story, but you can resize it if you'd like. When you're ready, send it to your stories. If there's a specific city or town you'd like us to run a report for, just email us at happyagent at layerrealty.com. You can easily post- Okay, your you can go to the next slide. So th those reports our marketing team is putting out monthly on the Lair Career Den. They come out like mid month because by by like mid April, all of the data is in in order to create those reports for March. Um, and we automatically do the report and the JPEG image for social media for every county in Massachusetts and New Hampshire as well as for the entire state of Mass, as well as the entire state of New Hampshire. But if you want, as Sergio said, if you want for any particular uh, town, something for a specific town, uh, just email the Happy Agent team and they will create one for you. Anything else on that, Sergio? Uh, no, so these, these do live in, in the career den. Uh, so just look out for that post in the Lair career den. And then the last thing, um, I just posted a video on the career done on how to do your holiday activity plan uh, through exact. Um, so we were able to, to set up a, a, a holiday activity plan through emails. Um, it does take a little bit of a setup, but if you follow the video, uh, you can get it all ready for, for the rest of the year. All right. This is awesome. So this is for you guys. We had lots of agents who reached out to us because prior to having Isaac, we had Improv. And uh, although we no longer uh, liked the, the quality of their print products, uh, they did have a holiday email campaign so that you could stay in touch with your clients on each holiday, just sending them an automated message. So thank you to our marketing team who created that same plan within Isaac. Also, as a reminder, you can very easily through Isaac set your friends, family, customers, past customers, people who come to open houses uh, into a camp, just a newsletter campaign. No matter what, this is one of those set it and forget it systems that I said at the beginning of today's program, if try to walk away today and say, what is the one thing that you're going to execute on? Potentially, this could be the one thing that you're going to execute on because it's a set it and forget it system to stay in touch with every person you know who might someday want to buy real estate through you. So make sure uh, that you're using the tools so that you constantly have a flood of business coming in down the road. Next, I've had some of you guys reach out because you applied for the coaching and hadn't heard from us yet. We did assign a coach. We're going to be reaching out to anybody that has applied for the Lair coaching. If you haven't done it yet, but you're interested, just go to LairRealty.com backslash Lair coaching. Um, we're going to do a call on Monday to introduce you to your coach uh, for the next six months of that program. Okay, next, I want to introduce Nick from AdWorks, who's going to show us a 
cool way to find inventory using AdWorks. So welcome, Nick. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, everyone. Hey, Stacey. Thank you for inviting me today. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen here. Sergio, I don't know if you need to give me any permissions or anything. Now you should be able to do it. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if this works. Uh, it's not letting me here. Um, what message are you getting? Because you are a panelist. You should be able to, to share. Mm, yeah. Let's see. Allow. Yeah, it's just not allowing me to share here. Uh, let me see if I jump off quick and try again. Give me one second here. Okay. All right, while we do that, I'm gonna keep going. Why don't we have Craig from our sustainability team uh, talk for a few minutes. Since it's Earth, Earth Day is coming up in about not even a week. Uh, Craig, tell us what's going on with the Lair Sustainability Report. Absolutely, thank you, Stacy. So um, I joined the firm in 2019 as the Chief Sustainability Officer. And one of the things that we wanted to do was to publish an annual sustainability report. We published that on Earth Day, which we're on schedule for right now, even though I'm only typing with one hand and I have to finish things off today. But uh, I'm getting that to the marketing department today to be able to be released for Earth Day uh, on the 22nd. So what is a sustainability report? Why is it important? Well, we did notice that uh, many S&P 500 companies, there was a big surge in corporate sustainability reporting, CSRs from 2011 to 2016, S&P 500 companies in 2011, 16% of them were producing voluntary sustainability reports. That jumped in that six, six year period to 82%. So uh, like your National Association of Realtors, believe it or not, they've just uh, started a full 10 year sustainability plan in which their first sustainability report will be published uh, sometime this year. So this is actively happening in the real estate environment, but there's also a huge opportunity because there's been no residential real estate company, as far as we can tell, that's done anything like this. So this will be our second annual report. Uh, what is it? So it's really our accounting to all of our stakeholders and all of our consumers about the work that we're doing to make sustainability part of Lear's DNA. That includes staff engagement, agent engagement, consumer and community engagement, and how we're growing that over time. Uh, but obviously, we realize that for all of you as, as agents in the field, you're not truly engaged on this stuff unless you see that there's a real estate sales opportunity here, right? So a big part of the report is front loaded with the market opportunity that's happening here, particularly in the Commonwealth. Um, you know, we, we're looking at the work that's happening on Beacon Hill, that's happening at the cities and towns, the municipalities throughout the Commonwealth that are, are really engaged, where, where uh, the state of Massachusetts is a real leader in looking at climate problems and solutions to be able to deal with some of those problems as we progress through this uh, uh, climate crisis that we're in right now. Um, there's a growing awareness that, that uh, the, the built environment is part of that problem. 39% of US energy consumptions attributed to the built environment. But there's also a growing awareness on Beacon Hill and at municipalities throughout the Commonwealth that building science advances, particularly over the last 10 years, have really created a market opportunity to, to uh, make our homes and buildings uh, uh, better, uh, more responsible to the environment cost effectively. That's really the key right now. So one of the things in this sustainability report that we focus on, Stacy, is what happened in 2019, the town of Brookline, Massachusetts, passed an ordinance that would have, uh, if it was accepted by law, which it was not, that would have not allowed new construction to use fossil fuels. But the outcome of that was uh, Governor Baker signed last month 
the next gen climate plan for the state of Massachusetts. That is now law. And in that law, there is now an opportunity for uh, municipalities throughout the co Commonwealth to, to uh, uh, use a net zero energy stretch code option that's being reviewed right now by Department of Energy Resources at MAR at Massachusetts and how that's going to be implemented. But that is an option now for Massachusetts communities to require new construction to be built to net zero energy standards. What that means is the buildings built efficiently enough and with uh, some kind of renewable, either on-site or off-site option, um, be able to produce as much energy as it uses on an annual basis. 56 communities in the Commonwealth, believe it or not, uh, uh, sent a letter of support for Governor Baker to uh, sign that law specifically because of the net zero energy stretch code option. So again, what we're looking for is what this what this political will here in the Commonwealth means for your business. You know what you need to be uh, do to be an effective player because we want Lear to be a leader in this space. We have over a hundred thousand homes this year. We went over the hundred k mark with homes with solar PV uh, on their rooftops. So what does that mean in the individual real estate transactions? So that's what we do. we're really front loading the document with a lot of important information about that. We're also looking at sustainability efforts within Lear and, uh, and trying to create uh, uh, goals, uh, markers for us to, to, to stand tall on so that we're not just uh, talking the talk, but we're walking the walk as well. Stacy wanted me to address how you can use this in your business, right? Uh, relating to clients. Well, 74% of US consumers are making purchasing decisions based on a company's environmental reputation. And of that group, some of those consumers are making real hardcore decisions. 19% are choosing specific brands due to the environmental social record uh, of a company right, 19%, and 18% are stopping uh, working with a specific brand because they're not doing enough. So consumers out there are really engaged on this topic. And think about all we do at Lear for a second, right? Not only with the sustainability initiatives that we're involved with, but all of the things that we do to better communities. The Greg Hill Foundation is another excellent example of that. All of our agents, and Stacey, I did notice on, on the participants chat, we have a whole bunch of green designated agents on, which is fantastic. Uh, but all of the agents that also are engaged, you know, at the municipal level as volunteer leaders, and certainly at our local state and national association of realtors, the largest trade organization in the United States. So one thing I would encourage all of our agents that are listing properties or working with brokers, uh, uh, working with buyers, start, you know, involve in those first conversations is, hey, you know, Lair is doing a lot to make our communities better. And I'm curious, Mr. and Mrs. Seller or Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, you know, is there something in particular that you, that, that you volunteer for? Uh, is there something that you donate to a cause that you donate to? We have a lot of partners we're already engaged with, but maybe we can, we can do better. And with that, that might open the conversation of all that we're doing here at Lear to really make our communities better and, uh, and stronger. And I think that's a message that many agents aren't utilizing right now, Stacy. So that's one place where the sustainability report on top of the fact that I think it provides good quality information can be used to engage our consumers in a completely new way. Uh, also one last thing, North Shore Realtors offering the green designation May 18th, 19th, 25th and 26th. Uh, I'll be teaching that class. It also offers eight CEUs. So if your birthday's coming up in June, great time to pick up your CEUs and become knowledgeable and competent in this part of the marketplace, Stacey. That's it for me. All right. Awesome. I have another giveaway. This time I'm giving away a signed copy of the book, Carry On Warrior, uh, The Power of Embracing Your Messy, Beautiful Life. So if your life is messy yet beautiful, uh, you would love this book. It's by uh, Glennon Doyle Melton. It's an awesome book. Uh, and it is a signed copy. So the author did sign a copy of it. Many of you guys know I collect signed books. Anytime I get in front of an author, I get tons of copies 
signed. So this is a signed copy of it. And the question, the trivia question I have is, in what year on Earth Day did more than 100,000 people ride bikes in China in order to reduce the CO2 emissions and save fuel? So the question is what year in China on Earth Day did more than 100,000 people ride bikes in China to reduce CO2 emissions? So we're looking for a year. Let's see. Okay, I think, I think Tammy McKenney got it, 2012. Did anybody on Facebook get it, Sergio, too? Let's see. Uh, there's Kimberly, but I think Tammy got it first. Okay, so Tammy, we will send you a copy of Carry On Warrior. We will get this sent out to your house. So congratulations, Tammy. Uh, with that, I want to just make a comment on the sustainability report. Even if you are not into sustainability, I want you guys to think about what Craig just said. Potentially, you can win a listing by just having a sustainability report with you. So even if you know nothing about sustainability, which I hope you do embrace this year and say that you're going to get a green designation if you don't have it. But even if you don't have it, why wouldn't you automatically throw that into your listing presentation? It makes it just a little bit more likely that you can win a listing over a competitor who is not even going to mention it. And it can just be as simple as saying, Mr. and Ms. Seller, here's some information on our Lair Realty Sustainability Initiatives. You can go through this guide. If you have any questions, please let me know. So think about that for your uh, next listing. Also, we promised everybody a free gift today. So I sent out an email this morning saying, 100% of the people who attend today's program are going to get a free gift. So in honor of Earth Day and our sustainability team at Lair, we ordered a whole bunch of these bamboo straws. So if you would like a bamboo straw set, uh, it comes with three bamboo reusable straws, as well as a little cleaner, like a little uh, cleaner for the straws. And it comes in a layer branded bag. If you would like one of those because you wanna participate in creating a better earth for Earth Day this year, all you have to do is go to layerrealty.com backslash green. And on there, you'll find just a quick form. So we know your name and address. Uh, fill that out and you will have your layer sustainable straws by Earth Day 2021. So uh, go to layerrealty.com backslash green to make sure you order your sustainable straws. Uh, with that, let's go back and see if we can get Nick's screen share working. All right, let's give it a shot here. Yes. Boom. All right. So by the way, I want to just prime everybody for what I asked you to uh, talk about today. We have tons of agents who have buyers looking in a particular market. And yet there's no inventory or they've put in offers on several houses and they still can't get an offer accepted. And sometimes you guys go and do like mailer campaigns to a neighborhood. We're going to show you how to use AdWorks to target a neighborhood with information to let a particular neighborhood know that you have buyers looking in that town. So with that, Nick, I'll let you take it away. All right. Awesome. So, I'm just here in Stacy's profile and we already created one for you. So just to give you a little visual here, you can create kind of a custom ad, you know, calling out that you have a buyer looking for a home in a certain area um, and to contact you. So here's just kind of a, a quick look of one that we've already created. Um, but I'm just going to run you through how to do this. So if you go here to start a new ad, and you go to ads for local areas. I'm just going to put in my name. And I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. So I'm going to put in my city here. 
we'll give it a second. Uh, so it'll take you to this next screen. And what you're able to do is really pick what area you want to target. Um, so if I have a buyer that's looking to purchase over here, John's Island, and then I can choose that radius so I can expand it if I want to, I can shrink it. Um, so you have the ability to really move this around to figure out where you want to target. Um, so once you figure that out, then you'll go to your ad design here. And we have just, this is the template version. So you can kind of play around with this if you want to. Um, you know, you can change the header, uh, buyer looking on John's Island, you know, something like that. Um, or you saw that the marketing team created a custom ad. So they can also create a custom one for you. And then you can go down here to advance to upload your own ad. And then you can just upload one instead of having to deal with the template. So, um, and you'll see, you can upload a web ad, a Facebook ad a banner ad and a mobile ad as well. So um, I know that the marketing team would be ha happy to help with creating a custom ad or you're welcome to kind of play around with that template as well that's built in there for you. So we, we created these ads in Canva. So we'll share these templates with you guys. They're sized correctly for both the web ad and for the Facebook image. Uh, so you can, you can customize them as well. All right. Awesome. And don't forget, we're going to be doing another training program with AdWorks on April 28th, but I encourage you guys to make sure you've watched the first two training programs on AdWorks. If you have not um, done so yet, we have a quick question. Um, Nick, hold on. Let me just see what it was. It was about, um, can we do more than one look on the same zip zip code without paying more i'm not sure what that means does that sound um like you want to target two different areas you have the ability to, to do that if you want to pick two areas to target you can do that as well i don't know if that answers your question or not okay all right awesome stuff thank you nick absolutely thank you all right next up let's see Make sure you guys go to layerrealty.com backslash green if you want your sustainable straws. All right, next up, I want to introduce one of our favorite closing attorneys, uh, Joe Colantino. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna put Joe's info up on the screen uh, in case you have not used Joe. Joe is one of the best closing attorneys because he's always around. I've called him at the strangest hours and he just picks up the phone, which is awesome when you have like a real estate deal and you need immediate help. But Joe's going to talk about today. We have tons of buyers putting in crazy offers on these properties. And because they're so desperate to get a property, they're removing contingencies, uh, mortgage contingencies, financing, uh, inspection, appraisal, like sight unseen, and potentially that creates liability for us as real estate agents. So Joe, tell us what we can do to protect ourselves in these crazy times. Yep. Thank you, Stacey. And I just want to say I have uh, severe anxiety. That's why I always answer my phone. <laughs> I don't want anything going on missed. But um, so I'm just going to talk about the three big things that people are doing right now, which is waving. Um, inspection, appraisal, and mortgage commitment. So I'm going to talk about those three things really because that's what we're, we're seeing the most of. And I'll, I'll say um, what we can be doing to make sure that we're protecting the client still, as well as yourselves, that you're not going to later uh, get involved in a lawsuit from a, a pissed off client. So in regard to inspections, I think the best thing you can do is, is fully disclose everything. I don't think we, t you know, we don't really need to build, um, disclosures that, that buyers need to be signing, but you need to remember to keep everything in writing. So it's just always the most important thing is, is when you're disclosing these things to an agent, follow up with an email, do it on the phone, do it in person, but follow up with an email and recap what you spoke about in the potential pitfalls, the disadvantages, the risks, all associated with this type of stuff. So inspections, clients want to waive inspection. You need to disclose to them. Wait, by waiving inspection, there's nothing you can ever go back to the seller on unless the seller's fraudulently 
making representations about something. And even then it's really difficult to do. My suggestion on waiving inspection is that you advise a client, hey, let's do an inspection for informational purposes only. You're now just risking, let's say a thousand dollars at offer. And if you find something that you really don't like, walk away from your thousand bucks, let the seller keep it. You just saved yourself a lot more money and you got your offer accepted, which probably wouldn't have been done if you had a traditional inspection contingency in there. So inspections, if, if uh, a buyer wants to do it, the informational purposes only clause, but they have to understand and you need to disclose to them. Informational purposes only means if you find a problem, the seller keeps your thousand dollar deposit. Um, moving on to appraisal waiving. So I've seen in the last few months, some, some clients do this and I've seen some clients really get into hot water where we had a property I was selling for a seller in Reading list price was 7.99 the offers three offers came in one was 850 with 5% down one was 839 with 20% down and one was uh, i believe 815 with 5 to 10% down they took the 839 with 20% the property appraised for 775 even lower than than the ask the buyer put a contingency in there that says property is to appraise at or above 802 so they capped it so that buyer actually really made out. My seller, not as much, but the buyer really made out because they capped their liability on the appraisal. So then we went up to that uh, 802 number. So um, seller was you know, still happy. They got over what it was listed at, things like that. So that's, that's my recommendation on the appraisals. If a, if, if, if a buyer or a seller is pushing you to waive it in its entirety, you need to make sure that the, the buyer is someone that can, worst case scenario, come up with the delta in between what the lender is going to lend at and what the property is going to potentially appraise at. No one ever thought this property that we were selling was going to appraise for 775 is extremely low. Um, so if you can put a cap number in there, if you know what your cash on hand is, you know the cap number, try to cap it and make it a decent cap uh, based on your offer. And again, you want to disclose, disclose, disclose and recap all of the disclosures that you do with your client. Um, waiving mortgage contingency altogether, absolutely insane if, you're, if your client does not have the cash to come up with unless they're comfortable uh, parting with their deposit at purchase and sale, um, which leads me to the deposit at purchase and sale. Traditionally, we see 5%. Uh, if you can get that number lower and waive some stuff, well, now we're kind of doing this like, you know, uh, this for that type of thing. We're going to give you a better offer, but we want to minimize our exposure on our deposit. You know, some agents are, are stuck in their ways. They'll say it's 5%. No way. You know, and you, you get these conversations uh, with agents. Or you have some contingencies, you have an appraisal contingency, but you increase your deposit from five to 10%. So there's ways to play with the offers. But again, we want to just be disclosing, disclosing, disclosing to the buyer um, that they're never going to come back and say, you didn't tell me if it didn't appraise, I wouldn't get my money back, um, which is unfortunately very common, especially in a market like this, where it's not buyer friendly, we're doing crazy things to get things done. The other thing to, to go off of the mortgage commitment um, I'm seeing lenders starting to do, and, and I think Mike McLaughlin at Ross does this, they'll give you an actual commitment letter. So they'll vet you through the whole process before you even find a property. So you won't have a pre-approval. You'll have an actual commitment with some conditions, find a property, you know, a verification of income. There'll be commit conditional items on there, but it will be a very complete loan application. That'll make you and your client feel better about potentially waiving a mortgage commitment because you know that it's rock solid. Um, but again, disclose, if you ever have any questions, anyone wants to run an offer by me, again, I tell this to everybody, even if it's not going to be a client of mine, I'm happy to help kind of pick uh, through an offer and, and talk it out to make sure that, you know, two sets of eyes are always better than one. So that's, that's what I have on that. Awesome, thank you, Joe. All right, next up, we also have with us today, Stacy Molinari from I Am a Insurance. And welcome, Stacy. Before we have you 
chat, if you could talk for a few minutes about when our agents need insurance, I'm going to put all of her uh, contact info here as well. But when our agents need insurance, just because we had a little snag this month, they should reach out to you personally, instead of just calling the main number of IMA insurance, correct? So Stacy, yes, we had a little issue this week. It actually was an inquiry that came in through like a general line and the person that got it, it, it didn't have a lot of direction just to call me and um, they weren't sure if it was spam or what, but by the time we, it got into to my hands, it had been a, a day later. Mm -hmm. And that's not how we do things. We actually guarantee a four hour turnaround for layer on all quotes. Mm -hmm. So, and beyond that, I think our, our biggest benefit is that we want to be a partner for you to help you with the things that can cause deals to crumble. And that requires for us to be really responsive to you. I had an agent yesterday, for example, call me on a property that had literally like minutes had just gone on. I've had a lot of people buying secondaries, a lot of um, coastal properties. This was a property in Harwich and they, it had just hit the market, sent me an email. Is this in a flood zone, Stacy? Right away, I was able to turn around the, the certificate to say, yes, it is. It's an AE zone. You know, if, if you need that type of response, this is also what Stacy is showing is my, um, that's my office line. I, I believe I've shared with everybody too, and I will share it again. Please call my cell phone. I get texts from agents. I love it. I will, I, I do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And in response to what happened last week, cause it really kind of shook me. Cause that's something I really pride myself in is responsiveness. Um, we created a layer a layer specific email. So it is layer at imaagency.com. So that has me and a couple, our personal lines manager, a couple other people on our team. So if I was ever not available in a meeting like this with somebody else or whatnot, I want, I want there always to be someone to be able to respond to you guys as soon as possible, especially in this market. Um, because if we can help you, um, you know, close a deal or whatever we can do, we want to do that. Um, and some of the interesting things that have been coming up, I mean, flood is always a hot topic. It's always a dirty five letter word. Like nobody wants to think about it, talk about it, but it can blow up deals. And if you have a listing coming on, that's in a flood zone, I have no issues, um, quoting that for you. I will quote it so that you can, you can show buyers, we can quote private flood markets. Um, so you have that ready for when people are hesitant to put in an offer. I don't know if that's still happening now, but if someone's hesitant because it's in a flood zone and they're not sure of those premiums, um, we can have that all ready for you. We can have it ready for you for an open house. I can have it available to you before you list a home, whatever you need. Um, call me. That's my biggest message today is to call me. Um, so if you're dealing with flood, if you're dealing with coastal properties, the lot, like I said, I've had a lot, a big influx of um, vacation properties being purchased. Um, and we all just to let you know, we are also licensed in all 50 states. So, you know, we can help out with that. Like if someone's buying something on the coast in New Hampshire and um, on the water in Maine or anything like that, we can help with all those as well. Um, some other things recently that I've gotten calls from realtors, I just like to share because I feel like you guys are all kind of dealing with the same issues is that a realtor called me and said, we just looked at a home. I've never heard this before. They have Pacific Stab Lock Electrical. I was just told there's no way to get insurance. Okay, there is a way to get insurance. There are companies that will insure it. It can just be more challenging and, and potentially more expensive because the markets are fewer. Um, but if you ever hear that and someone ever says it's not insurable, call me. I've been doing this for 20 years. And so far, I have not found a home that I actually could not insure. <laughs> so, you know, it, it sometimes it can come down to pricing, but then I can also make recommendations too. like if they do this within 30 days, I'll be able to get standard market pricing that comes down to knob and tube too. So sometimes it's a matter of us working together to come up with a plan. You know, this is insurable, but would they be willing to replace the electrical within 30 days? Yes, that was their plan anyways. Great, let's move forward. We've got all the markets available to us. Um, and another thing I wanted to touch on, um, because Craig, always talking about green homes, insuring green homes can be a challenge too. 
So, you know, in the beginning, about 10 years ago, it was hard. Carries didn't want to write solar panels, right? Now it's just the norm and everybody does it. And, it, and it's continuing to shift. Now, where we have a bit of a rub is when a home is completely off the grid. And I just did one a couple of weeks ago that was completely off the grid. And it just took a, you know, they had solar panels, they have a windmill, but they have a backup generator. Um, they have a pellet stove. Like, so it just meant we had to go through and make sure all those safeguards are in place because we live in New England and people are concerned about if you're away and one of those systems fails and now you don't have power and a pipe burst, what happens? This house had a backup generator that would automatically kick on. Um, and we were able to work through that the, the buyer was willing to put in low temp alarms. Um, so the carriers were comfortable with it, but it takes a little bit more working through, talking through. So if you have someone that's looking at a home that's completely off the grid, which I think is really cool to be honest, but if you have someone that's looking, um, please make sure you reach out to me um, because we can help you work through that. The other Not thing- Not only that, Stacey, I wanna just throw one other piece sure. in that Oh, Craig, you, you're muted. Sorry, off-grid homes are not allowed to be uh, sold into the secondary mortgage market right now from Fannie Mae's perspective. So just another piece of that as well. I, I also, for the home that I just sold in Weston, the buyers actually uh, got a reduced insurance premium because it's LEED certified as well. So just bringing that up as a possibility as well. Yes, absolutely. It's always, it's funny, like there's like a middle ground, you know, you can get a discount for a hybrid car, but they're more expensive to repair. <laughs> so, you you know, you're kind of work, working through different angles, but yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, and what, oh, the COVID, what, what Joe had kind of talked about too was, you know, there are issues now, right, where the cost and where people, the market value right? Versus the cost to rebuild right now, there's a greater divide. There's usually, you know, it's not hundred percent spot on, but there's a greater divide, which is then what Joe touched on causing problems in the, in the mortgage world, right? Because now they're financing a larger amount. We're giving an insurance policy, let's say for $200,000 less because we're insuring the cost to rebuild. We're not insuring the land. We aren't, it's not a market value policy, right? It's, it's what the cost would be to rebuild your home. Um, so we've, I've had a lot of questions just yesterday at someone, you know, my offer was accepted, but it was a hundred thousand dollars over asking. So what should I expect in terms of insurance? And I was able to put his mind at ease, like the way we write our policies, it's on a guaranteed rebuild. The mortgage company is going to accept that. We will handle some of that back and forth. Um, and, and we do, we, we do the back and forth to make sure the mortgage company is comfortable, send them whatever documentation they would like. Um, but that we're hitting up against a lot more because of the difference in, um, in the values and the, the over asking um, offers. So those are some of the big, big things that are happening right now to look out for. But my biggest message is always call me. Um, if you hear that something's not insurable, if you're concerned about where it's located, um, please feel free to use me as a resource reach out to me on my cell email. We now have that email layer at imaagency.com. You see, do you see that um, because the insurance is often based on that guaranteed rebuild and I know construction prices are through the roof right now, like the, the cost of building a home has tripled in the last probably six months. Does that, do you foresee insurance pricing going up because of that? Insurance pricing, to be honest with you, has been increasing and it's it's a really, the property market is a hard market right now. Um, it's not coming down. It is going to keep increasing. Right now, they have not changed how they're valuing. So when we do it, we have to do what's called a Marshall Swift and Beckett appraisal on the cost to rebuild a home. And when we do that, they have not changed those systems yet. I, I, I think they're waiting to see if this is temporary or not. Um, and that's a big part of having that guaranteed rebuild. I always tell people there's circumstances that can seriously increase the cost to rebuild. Even when those explosions happened, right? In Andover and Middleton, when anytime you have a supply and demand issue, the costs go up, right? And it's the same thing in the construction world and in the insurance world. So anytime you can get it, you should be having your buyers get that guaranteed rebuild because the way that that wording, as long as it's insured to value, which we're doing these appraisals, we're making sure the companies are going out and inspecting, 
they're willing to pay whatever it takes to rebuild over and above what it's listed on that policy, but it has to be insured to value where it would be right before the loss. So we haven't seen those increases yet, but if the cost of materials and everything continues to stay the way it is, then we will start to see that those appraisals and the estimates to rebuild will increase. Okay. All right, awesome stuff, thank you. I know we are about out of time, but I have one more guest that you guys need to hear from and then I will let everybody go. Um, I have with us today, Ariana Cardillo. You guys know her from our resist workouts on Monday mornings, but what you may not know about Ariana is she kills it with Op City. She hasn't even been with us that long. And like every month I see her closing Op City deals. So when I saw her at the St. Patrick's Day event recently, I said, what are you doing? In fact, the entire Button & Co team in Burlington kills it with Op City. So I invited Ariana on today to talk about like, what is it she's doing to convert these leads? So welcome, Ariana. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So um, I don't know if we're doing anything extra special over here, but um, we usually, so first things first is when that op city goes off, we all go crazy because you have to get it as soon as it, um, as soon as it rings, but um, we try and meet them right away. Um, so usually they call in about a property and most of the time they actually think they're going to talk to the seller's agent and they're not. Um, so I guess op city does vet them first um, and they make sure they don't have an agent and sometimes they're pre-approved. Sometimes they're not. Um, so we, like I said, we try and meet them right away. Usually they want to meet and see the property that they're inquiring about within like the next day or two. So with, you know, schedules being crazy, I mean, we try and just schedule a showing right away. Um, and also we have to make sure that the property is still available because sometimes they are looking at something that's under agreement. Um, so Meeting them right away is number one. Number two, if they don't like the property that they see the first time, we set them up right away in Real Scout because you can see what they're looking at. You can set them up on a specific search and they can, you know, we all know how Real Scout works. Um, they can be interested in a property or they can trash it if they don't like it. And then when you meet them too, um, and this goes for all clients, um, we just try and build a relationship with them because we don't know them and they're just some random person that's looking at a random home and getting connected to a random agent. So it's, it's good to just try and build that rapport with them right away um, when we meet them. And then another thing too, a lot of them don't realize that they're getting money back. So if they work with you as their agent, they'll get money back at closing from Op City. Um, and I've asked a couple of them when I meet them, I'm like, do you realize that um, you'll, you will get money back if you end up working with me and we get an offer accepted. And they're like, no, I had no idea. And I'm like, okay, well, and then I just explain it a little bit and I have them call to get a further explanation if they need it. Um, and honestly, that's really it. Um, okay, so a couple things that I also think are unique. In, in Real Scout, you guys like automatically, like if they heart, if they heart a listing, you mm -hmm. immediately try to get an appointment usually, I think, right? Yes. Yep. So you can get, um, you can get an update from real scout if they heart something or a star it. it's either heart or star. I don't know, but you'll get an email saying your client is interested, um, in viewing one, two, three main street. And then I just text them or I call them and I'm like, Hey, when can you go look at it? Um, and try and set up a showing right away. So, okay. Second thing. I also believe you guys are quick about releasing a customer. If it's not going to work out, when do you know you should just release them and be done with it? So it depends. I mean, if I've met the in person with them, I try and like keep them a little longer, but if they're honestly not, I try and reach out like three times. And if they really don't answer me back, I just release it. Um, and actually it happened to me recently. I ended up releasing a guy um, like two months ago and then he just texted me like a couple days ago to go look at a house. But you know, I just, cause I had tried reaching out to him for a couple of weeks, three weeks. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not going to keep it if they're just going to sit there. And cause, cause with Op City too, when you have a lead, you have to update it every seven days. So it keeps them top of mind too. Like, oh, I haven't talked to Joe Smith in a week. Let me try and reach out to him. And if he doesn't answer and I keep having to put that in Op City a few times, I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just release. They're not interested anymore, so. Okay, and then um, what is your system for doing those updates? Like, do you have one day a week that you say, okay, I'm gonna sit and do all my updates or is it just sporadic throughout the week? So honestly, Op City will, you'll get an alert. 
so I'll wait. It says um, update due in, I think it starts at two days and then it goes to, you know, that day update due today. And if you don't update it in Op City, they actually um, pause your lead alert. They shut you off. So as soon as it says update is due in like two days, I'll go in and go through all of them um, and update them all at once. And then try, when I do update them in Op City, I try and reach out to them too if I haven't spoke to them, so. Okay. And then my last question is your mindset around Op City, because most of our agents have a love-hate relationship with Op City. For anybody that's not on Op City and you want to be, you can just email happyagent at layerrealty.com. We'll send you an invite to Op City. But how it works is Op City is owned by realtor.com. A great number of the leads that come in are coming in through realtor.com, but other portals as well. And Op City kind of vets them, sends them out to a bunch of area agents within a marketplace. Whoever accepts the lead first gets it. However, they're expensive too. So Op City charges 38% for the referral. And of that 38%, I think 3% is going back to the buyer at the time of closing. My question for you, Ariana, is some agents say it's just too expensive for me to want Op City leads. Like, what's your thought process? You're going to just work that customer to send you other business down the road and make them a customer for life? Or what's your thought process? Yeah, I mean, I think so, Stacey, like you said, I think it's always good to expand your network, right? So even if you work with someone for, I mean, I had my op city that I closed in February, uh, January or February, I worked with her since October and I showed her a lot of houses, but you know what? She'll refer me business. I know she will because she'll trust me. I worked with her for a while. And even if you do have to pay that 38%, there's always someone that they're going to send you or you're going to keep in touch with them. And just building that relationship, I think is important. Even if, even if it's a big referral fee. That's awesome. Ariana, thank you for sharing your Op City updates with us Thanks today. You're doing an awesome job. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to everybody, we are hiring happy agent hosts for every office. If you would like to have somebody you know apply for one of these positions, you can go to layerrealty.com backslash jobs. Uh, and then my monthly tech update is just to let you guys know that we've been going through a series of uh, interviews with new showing companies. Our expectation is that within the next three months, we will no longer be with showing time, but rather with um, a competing vendor that is not owned by Zillow. So we'll keep you updated on that. And I also want to remind you guys, awesome um, there's an awesome podcast for real estate agents. It's called Hustle Humbly. And I love listening to it because it's just awesome content about how to build your business. These are active real estate agents. I think they're in Louisiana, um, building a phenomenal real estate business. And they share with you uh, what their systems are, uh, what technology they use, how they're killing it in their real estate market. So uh, make sure that you check out the Hustle Humbly uh, podcast. And uh, my book club recommendation this month, I dug this out of my bookshelf this morning. I don't have a copy to give away because this one is all written in, but I've, I've heard of so many agents going out and door knocking right now because there's such a lack of inventory. If you want an awesome book that tells you like scripts, how to door knock, how to set up your daily routine. There is a whole book called Door to Door Real Estate Prospecting. So check that out uh, if you're going to be uh, doing some prospecting. All right, I'm going to do one last uh, one last trivia question before we wrap up today. And the trivia question: You will receive a signed copy of the Ice Bucket Challenge. This is a phenomenal book about Pete Frady's story. This not only is this book inspirational because they have an awesome story, but it also shows you how you can build a movement using social media. So I think it's great for real estate agents as well. Um, and this is a signed copy by Casey Sherman, the author. And my question is in 2011, 2011, what country? planted 28 million trees with the Earth Day Network in honor of Earth Day. So what country in 2011 
planted 28 million trees with the Earth Day Network on behalf of Earth Day, 28 million trees. Uh, I don't think I see it yet. Oh, I think Rita got it. Did anybody get it on, it, the, the, it's Afghanistan, Sergio, did anybody get it on Facebook? Nope, still Googling on Facebook, so okay, Rita so is the winner. Rita is the winner. We will get that book out to you. Thank you, Rita, and thank you to everyone who attended today's sales meeting. Uh, oh, it says April 14th. We are seeing you April 14th. Uh, our next... Oh. Our, our next sales meeting will be uh, second Wednesday, uh, second Wednesday in May. Not sure what that date is, but we will see you second Wednesday in May. May 12th. May 12th for our next sales meeting. So thank you everybody for attending today. Go to lairrealty.com backslash green. If you want to get your sustainable bamboo straws. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.